Are couples in Singapore marrying for love or housing? And are people spending more on their credit cards just to get rebates and miles? Well, these are some of the themes of the third edition of the book titled Kyasunomics, Economic Insights for Everyday Life. And with us are two of the authors from NUS Business School, Sing Tian Fu, who is Provost Chair Professor at the Department of Real Estate, and Ang Sui Hoon, who is Associate Professor at the Department of Marketing. Professors, thank you so much for joining us today. Mm-hmm. Now, let's start with you, Prof Sing. You know, it's, it's been four years mm-hmm. since the last edition of Kyasunomics. Mm-hmm. So how has Singapore's social economic situation changed since yeah. then? Well, uh, has the people become less Kyasu? I think the behavior is still the same, but I think since the last time, 2021, since the book is, uh, the last year of the book written, I think things have th- made some behavior changes, especially the pandemics. I think the pandemic actually make people uh, more careful in terms of their uh, uh, health and also they are making financial decisions. So I think the people continue to be more competitive in terms of housing. We can see the, the number of applications for BTO flat continue to be very strong. But I think the behaviours uh, of optimising the resources uh, still, still continue to be an important uh, characteristic of Singaporeans. Would you say we've become more kiasu in that <laughs> In a sense, more competitive. In, uh, wow. yeah. Okay, we'll go to Prof Ang now. I will ask yeah. you what you feel are some of the new economic behaviours that you're seeing among Singaporeans at this time. Well, in the book, we cited one of our studies that where we did in India, and this concerns online purchases. And we found that um, in India, for these online purchases, you could either pay by credit card or with cash. But when there's a security breach, and we do see that quite often, uh, guess what happens? The amount spent on credit card purchases online goes down, right? Rightfully so, uh, but for cash goes up. But it's very transient. Uh, in a matter of a couple of weeks, people seem to have forgotten about the security breach and uh, credit card purchases online goes back up. And what does this tell us? This tells us that people are looking for convenience as opposed to security issues. Mm, that, that's interesting. Now, how does that impact the way you think that, that Singaporeans are interacting, not just online when it comes to shopping habits, but also the way they perceive these cybersecurity breaches? Well, so it's, it's just a matter of uh, a fact of life. They take it as a fact of life and therefore, if it occurs, yes, it does, but take it in stride. Now, a very uh, big point that the book also brings up, uh, Prof Singh, let, let's go yeah. with you now. One of the issues raised is how divorces and marriages are also very closely affected by BTO housing. Mm-hmm. Can you That's explain right. to our viewers what yeah. the link and the correlation is here? Yeah, in fact, we actually look at the data from 2000-2015 about the correlation between uh, BTO supply and also people behaviour in terms of marriages and mm, divorce. I think, interestingly, we see housing estate where the increase in the BTO flat, in fact, the number of uh, the percentage or the p- probability of marriage actually increased in, for the same cohort. I mean, people actually uh, waiting for the BTO before they get married. Any delay in the BTO flat may lead to a delay in their decision to get married. So there's very close correlation between housing and their, uh, their life behaviour of many young people. And we also look at issue about what is consequence if they over-consume, is overstretched financially. When they buy a BTO flat that is too expensive or too big a house, whether they are continue to be able to uh, uh, manage the, the financially after marriage. Though we also see this increased uh, percentage of people, uh, the divorce rate for the same cohort group, especially those areas where the higher or more expensive BTO flat. Mm, so it does sound that you know, that housing issue does put some pressure yeah. on the marriages as well. You know, another yeah. issue that does put pressure, I suppose, would be uh, yeah. using credit or the way you spend, for yeah. example. Now, Prof Ang, you've looked at credit card cashback rewards specifically, yeah. and when it comes to spending and debt accumulation, uh, yeah. credit card billing was billed at $23.1 billion uh, in 2024 Q1, and also bad credit card debt sets risen to 89.4 billion dollars, a staggering amount. Would you see that the chase for cashback and miles are leading to such habits? Definitely so. So people, when they spend for points or for such cashbacks, they view it as, oh yes, I've saved some money, right? And so let's say you think you save $50. And so these, okay, with that savings of $50, I can now spend $50 more on something else. But they forget 
yes, I spent fifty dollars more, and then they spent another fifty dollars more, forgetting that they had already used that same amount. So there's a doubling down, tripling down, and so the debt just grows. Mm, so in this sense, would you say that people are not actually really saving at the end of the day because there's an illusion uh, of saving? Yeah, and they're just not financially savvy enough to keep track of their expenses. They remember the good things, which was the initial saving, but they forget about the outflow. Mm, I think a lot of this also has to do with, you know, how people perceive buying things as elevating their social status as well. Which brings me to the next uh, mm. question, Prof Singh. Are people still trying to move up the social ladder when it mm. comes to housing mm. these days? Do you see a similar pattern mm. since the last edition? Yeah, I think for the current cohort of generation, I mean the children cohort, I think they, they, it's harder for them to actually uh, afford the HDB flat because of price and corner compared to the parent generation. But we have seen already in the last last round of intergeneration mobility, when the, when the parents actually own their house, the children actually have better education, can move out the housing ladder. Will this how social mobility will continue uh, into into the next generation or so, given the high pricing. I think if price continue to grow at a stable rate, economy is actually doing well. And I think uh, the current generation will still can expect some, some social mobility. And also, it's not just the housing wealth alone. I think own, owning a house because of the security of space, it helps. Uh, future generation to have a, a stable family environment to study and upgrade themselves and also better neighborhood and uh, interaction as well that can actually help the intergeneration mobility not just housing wealth alone uh, that push up the housing ladder or social mm. social mobility ladder right and you know prof Ang, i want to ask you as well what would be the long-term and the short-term implications of such a trend especially when it comes to economic downturn when we think about these times yeah so i guess then people have to be more prudent they may have to change their behavior and uh, reallocate how they spend their money so if housing has become uh, less affordable then think about the other big ticket items that they can uh, do away with you know like cars car ownership and so on so a reallocation of resources is needed Mm, some good tips there from both professors. Thank you so much for joining us today and for sharing your insights with us. Uh, that was Professor Sing Tian Fu and Associate Professor Ang Sui Hun from the National University of Singapore. Thank you both so much for coming in.